So there was one time, as some of you know, um, I lost my dad when I was 13. So um, being that young, I didn't get a chance to learn how to change oil in a car, um, how to do minor plumbing repairs, um, little things like that. I, I didn't have the opportunity to uh, to learn. And uh, and one time we had we had a place in, in Michigan that we went to on weekends and for the summer for a few weeks. Um, and he was changing an outlet. And I had to have been 11 or 12. So I was goofing around doing my thing. And, and he said, look, you really should be watching this because one day you're going to need to learn how to do this. And you're going to wish you would have paid attention. And he's right, because I didn't pay attention. And I still don't mess with electricity. <laughs> But he was giving me an opportunity to learn something that I was going to need in the future. And I was too busy in myself and my own things to pay attention. So we're, we're going to kind of talk about that today. Let us pray. Lord, I ask you to continue to be here and be with your spirit. Let your spirit be with us all space, in the music, in the scripture, uh, in the love that we share with one another. Let your spirit work however you see fit, and let the words be pleasing to you that I speak. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. So we're going to dive into the scripture really quick, and then we're going to talk about it. Today is Ascension Sunday, by the way. So this is where Jesus is taken up to be with God. Uh, so the scripture is in Luke. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me, dramatic pause, in the law from Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And a change of heart and life will be will and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending you to my father. I am sending to you what my father has promised. But you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with the heavenly power. Which he gets into a little bit. This, this heavenly power is the Holy Spirit. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted up his hands and blessed, blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple, praising God. So, the Methodists have this horrible tradition of changing pastors. Okay. I, I want you to, to think about this without being scared. I, nothing's changing that's in your head. But I want you to think about this as we talk. Okay. So, Jesus is preparing his disciples. He's ministered with them, he's worked with them, he's friends with them. And then he goes up to heaven with God. And I wonder if, if their thoughts ever became, what do we do next? Our leader is no longer with us. He is with us, but he's not with us. 
So how do we how do we continue this thing? So I saw a few people this morning when the service started. How, how did you all feel? I, I know that the choir was up there getting ready, but everyone that was sitting down here, how did you feel when the things were off this morning when I didn't come in right away? I thank you for that. The audience said she was afraid I was sick. Do you think maybe that's what the disciples felt a little bit? That maybe, maybe they lost their way. They lost who was directing them. They lost who, who was, who was leading them. That was the point of what I did, is because that that moment of what's going on here, I, I don't I don't see Pastor Bill. You can imagine when Jesus went up to heaven, that the disciples might be rejoicing in it a little bit, of course, but at the same time, kind of be fearing about what's coming next. How how who, who takes the lead? Who does what? As much as I hate the tradition of changing pastors, it makes sense to me. Because see, it's not about us. Jesus took the time to explain to his disciples about what needs to be done. And he tells them, go out and do this. Minister to the world, baptize, make disciples. He already told them what needed to be done, so why, why be unsure what comes next? So with the pastor change, even though you all might like or not like how I preach, or my leadership, you come here and you should know what you should be doing. Because it has nothing to do with me. I have the job to shepherd you, to be there for you, to guide you, encourage you, tell you when I don't think it's a good idea, but the bottom line is when I say I don't think it's a good idea, guess what? The choice is in mine. As a church, the choice is yours. That's why it's important to enjoy your pastor, Know your pastor, but be focused on what you should be doing. Because if I get called to go to another place, your mission will remain the same, right? Right. So as Jesus ascended to heaven, they knew that they had a leader, and they would always be. He would always be with them, and the Holy Spirit would be coming to them soon to help guide them. But they had their mission set in front of them. Jesus prepared them for that. It's kind of like having a, a new boss come at work. And he might change everything up. But your mission might still be the same. For me, when I was in production, how we did it is what always changed. And that's what nobody liked. Why? Because it's changed. They come in and they say, we're going to take this standard operating procedure and we're going to take one and put it down here. We're going to do this first. And before you do any of that, you're going to do this. And you're going to go, why? The mission remains the same to get the papers out on time. So that's what we have to understand that when we look into the, if we look at the ascension, Jesus is up with God. We have the Holy Spirit with us now, forever. And God put in front of us a mission. A mission of loving each other. A mission of helping each other. A mission of, of community. 
blueprint was there for the disciples to follow, and they did eventually. But it had to be intimidating to know that you are you just lost your leader and to feel like you didn't have direction. When that happens to us, I hope we can all turn it back to, to what our mission is. And that is to share God's love with others. Whether I'm here, whether we're in this building, whether out in the park, we have that mission. There's a sign-up sheet, lots of sign-up sheets on the table. Some of this stuff is pretty easy. Prayer partners. Who here is too out of shape to pray? We all can pray. Sign up for prayer partners. We have the um, thing in the Central Park again. If you want to come out for an hour, sign up for an hour. Sit, talk. Because the only way for us to be able to complete that mission is to do it outside of here. Think of this. <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. Think of this as being your electrical outlet. And the only way for the electric to get here, out there, is for this outlet to work. So we have to know how to fix this outlet to be able to plug into it and get it out there. We have to understand Jesus calls us to more than just fellowship and church. Otherwise, look at it this way. When he ascended into heaven, what if the disciples decided they were just going to have church? And that's it. We're going to continue to worship Jesus right here in this little room. It. They knew the picture was bigger than that. And they knew that they had bigger things coming. Now next week is uh, Pentecost. The birth of the church. Wearing red. I ask you to come into service next week. Understanding the celebration is in need to celebrate the birth of the church. The body that does the mission. I'll close on this note. This is actually in the book of discipline. You have general conference, which is the entire world. You have your annual conferences, which is the state. And you have all the charge conferences. Do you know what the Book of Discipline says where the most ministerial work happens? In your local church. Not general conference, not annual conference. Ministry starts here. Goes up. That's what we're here for. I hope that you enjoy the song. It was hard to find one for this week. Um, this one is called Holy Holy Spirit Come. Um, again, I hope that you like it. But while you're meditating on the song. Remember of what our mission is. That when Jesus called and said, guys, you need to be paying attention to this because you are going to need this. This is what we're doing. I had a teacher that wrote everything you needed to know on the chalkboard. All you had to do was copy it down and sign it and, and take it home and study it for the test. 
including myself, lots of people failed because they didn't study. And one day he got up on the chair and he stopped his feet. He says, what more can I do? I gave you everything you needed to understand what your test is going to be over. Now Jesus is love. He would never stop his feet. But I could see him giving us a stern look and saying, you all know better than that. You know 